Our final topic for the day, Rob, the final one. The Batman reviews are coming in hot. If you go on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, dun, 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 how do you refresh the page? Rotten Tomatoes, it's it's been fluctuating all day. So I'm going to try my best to give you the actual score at the time of this recording. It is at 90%. So when we started this, I think it was 94, 96%. It went down to 91%. It went back up to 94. Now, as of this writing, it is 90%. But I got I to gotta be honest with you. So I, I haven't looked at many of the reviews. I'm not looking at the spoilery stuff or anything like that, right? I'm just looking at, I don't, I wouldn't do this, but for the sake of conversation in this channel, I am doing this, but I'm looking at it right here. And so Rotten Tomatoes, which I haven't been on in for years, they have top critics, which I'm guessing are, you know, the real critics. And then, <laughs> and then they have like the other Not ones. Those fake well, critics. <laughs> well, you know, it's 2022. Everybody's a critic. Uh, so I'm looking and top critics right now. I'm seeing three, four, five. Well, there's a lot of reviews, but on the first three pages, five of the top critics gave it a, 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 uh, a rotten review. However, I do. We got to talk about this with Rotten Tomatoes, though, before we get into anything. I see one that's a positive, but it's 2.5 out of four. 2.5 out of five. Rob, I don't care who you are. That's like, I kind of liked it. You know what I mean? Like, that's not like a rave review. It's like, mm -hmm. I always thought, like, I'm pretty sure with, um, with Eber, Roger and e like when Eber did his, his, uh, his reviews on his Chicago, was he the Tribune Times, whatever he was on? He, if he did a 2.5, which I believe Batman Forever was a 2.5 out of 4, it was a negative review. It was a thumbs down from Roger Ebert. Uh -huh. So I, I, I look, I'm, I'm excited for the movie. None of these reviews are going to change that at all. You see a lot of YouTubers like us loving this movie, and these critics and these YouTubers that have something to prove are. Are, you know, it's too dark and too much rain. I'm, I don't even know what that means. I mean, Daredevil had a lot too of Too much rain. rain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Robert Pattinson is a perfect fit for the cowl, but is bloated. But this bloated effort lacks focus. I think, anyway, what are your mm. thoughts on the Rotten Tomatoes score overall? I mean, um, it's it's fine. Like, like uh, 90% is nice and stuff like that. You know, it, it, it only had me worried if it was like suddenly or just out of nowhere, 60%. I would just been like, whoa, okay. So what the heck happened here? Uh, that, that, that would have thrown me off, but you know, 90% that that just really doesn't matter all that much to me. I just, you know, look at some of the highlights of the things that, uh, you know, people are liking and people not liking. Um, it's, it seems fine. Like, I, I, the only, I've only actually watched one review and that was from, uh, Christian Harloff. who's was like, uh, one, one that I like, like to listen to and whatnot, because he just like comes off as a very, um, you know, regular guy, like, you know, just watching, watching these movies. And w I think his biggest negative that he said was the length, you know, that it's, you know, nearly three hours long. And, you know, I'm, I'm completely fine with the length. If he says that's, you know, maybe a little bit too long and stuff like that, that's fine. That's, you know, his, his opinion and whatnot. I'm still completely hyped for this movie. Um, I mean, like, you know, you have, you have some of the people being like, oh, it's, uh, it's all over the place. Like, like what you said, like, you know, unfocused. Right. And that was a thing that I was maybe thinking slightly in the back of my head when I started hearing about all the characters that were going to be in it. Like you have Catwoman, Riddler and Penguin, but everything since then has completely, you know, made me feel fine with it because Catwoman is going to be more of like, you know, an anti-hero, I think in this movie, Penguin's only got, you know, his five or six scenes, whatever, whatever they're saying that he's in. And then, you know, Rid Riddler's the main bad. He's the, he's the main villain. So I don't know. I, I, they're saying about this unf unfocused stuff, but uh, I, I'm not really uh, worried about that. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to see this movie, James. Like I'm going to be seeing it in Seriously. just uh, over, just over two days. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I don't know. The, my issue with things like this, the unfocused focusedness is what, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Like, does it mean that you think that Penguin should be the main bad guy? That he shouldn't be in this movie if he's not the main bad guy? That Catwoman needs to just be uh, stealing jewelry? I don't understand what... It, I haven't seen it, obviously, so I can't... But but I just... My concern with it is that we've heard... That this movie got delayed so much because of COVID, just like we are talking about Morbius, Morbius. But instead of being released, it was the shooting that got delayed for this. So we've been hearing about this for so long. Mm -hmm. Matt Reeves is so passionate about it. And you hear what he's bringing to it. And maybe it comes off a little bit pre pretentious at times, I suppose. And people are influenced by these videos and these interviews and all this stuff when they go in to see a movie. And sometimes 
even though it's a positive talk, it influences you negative because you're like, oh, that person thinks blah, blah. And then you go in and all of a sudden, you know, you have this thought in your mind and then you let that kind of explode while you're watching it. And I think that's going to happen. I think that's going to happen with this movie, good and bad. That's what I think. I think people are going to love this movie to, to, to poo poo on the naysayers. And I think some people are not going to like it just to prove a point like oh no i did not like that like you know now all of a sudden people are starting to hate like the chris the christopher nolan trilogy right it's like that's oh, not that good it's not that good and i i love that trilogy i mean it was never perfect it was a really good trilogy it was solid all, th- all three movies are solid on their own i mean they need each other oh, the first one doesn't but you know they're, they're very solid films but now as time goes on people are like i didn't like it and now and i'm kind of gonna what's gonna annoy me the most with this movie is the comparisons to the dark knight because the dark knight is the gold standard of Batman movies, whether you like it or not, that's the gold standard. And for some reason, people are either afraid to like something more than that, or they're or they just want to like something more than that. And so that that's what's going to annoy me the most about this movie. And I feel like, who cares if you like one more than the other? Mm-hmm. Because the reality is, if this is a good movie, that means we're getting another good Batman movie. Let's just have good Batman movies and enjoy good Batman movies, and not pit them up against one another. Uh, but, but again, again, my thoughts on this Rotten Tomato score is whatever. I, I mean, like I said, I look at them and I see a lot of these critics that, you know, they probably just have a blog and they somehow got on there and they want to get a name for themselves. So they put a negative score or they are just, or, you know, the same type of thing, but on the flip side, and they're just fans of Batman and Matt Reeves and they want to give this thing a good score to help out Matt Reeves. And that's how people are right now. And then that's, you know, whatever, that's fine. We like I got a lot of emails last week and we talked about it on the show where people love the movie and you take it and you love it. And the thing is, is like I, I'm curious what the audience score on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I guess maybe Friday, Saturday, whenever it comes, is gonna be what that audience score is going to be on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, not that I really care, but I'm curious because we talked about Uncharted and Last Jedi and how those are very flip-flop of one another. And I'm curious to see. But the one thing, like you said, though, is the length, the length of time. It's three hours. I do not like three-hour movies. <laughs> that being said, there are three-hour movies that I do enjoy. If the movie needs the time to tell the story, I'm usually fine with that length of time, like Lord of the Rings, Zodiac, things like that. I think need the time. The new James Bond movie does not need the amount of time that it had that it could have been like a half hour oh. tv show that thing rob like i forgot halfway through it that uh jeffrey wright was even in it i was like what the hell anyway uh, <laughs> was, that was the longest that movie felt like an eternity but that's besides the fact some movies some movies i'm okay with being the time that being said we talked about the dark knight or i did We're, the dark knight is always the gold standard but i know a lot of people who are not huge fans of that movie because they find it way too long and way too bloated. And if they find that movie way too long and way too bloated, I can only imagine that they're what they're going to think of this movie. Unless of course it all comes together seamlessly, which who knows this again, though, Rob might be better suited. And I hate to say it because I feel like the Snyder cut of the justice league was like this, but this film may work better streaming. Oh, with like, possibly chapters as well just like no uh, no just like when uh, it when it hits when it hits hbo max you'll be able to pause it go pee pause it go get chicken dinner pause it go mm. pee pause it i'm just saying for not for you and i i know where you are but i'm just saying as in the grand scheme of things a movie that is three hours long as well as i might do in the in theaters i think it it's going to be more appreciated when it hits streaming because of the length and because of the stopping and you know you can watch it over a week if you wanted like a series well, I wonder in general if there's like, you know, an extended cut of some kind that, you know, Matt Reeves has somewhere. There's and, not. Uh, there's not? No. No, he, exactly said, you want. he said there's not. He did. Sorry to interrupt you, but there's not. He said there's no delete. He said this is the movie he wanted to make, but there is one scene that he loves that got cut. He said it will be on a deleted scene on the, when you buy it, a home video, it will be a deleted scene. Um, and it has the unseen prisoner. And what I think he's doing by this is tempering expectations for the Joker in this movie. But anyway, Rob, sorry, continue. No, no. And uh, yeah, like what, like with the length, like, you know, again, I was just wondering, you know, devil's advocate, if, if, if he's going to have one, but if he's not, then he's not, then, you know, we'll have some deleted scenes that are possibly great. And, you know, hearing that there's one that, you know, he felt like he needed to cut that he completely loves is, is pretty great. Sometimes I do think some auteurs like, you know, fall in love with their version of it and they don't want to like, you know, edit anything out whatsoever. And, you know, even though I completely love like, you know, something like um, the Snyder uh, cut of justice league, there could have been some stuff that could have been trimmed a little bit there, 
but 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 very little i think because um like when it comes to like you know how much uh joss whedon seemed to think that uh, he should have been tri- trimmed to service the characters uh is pretty ridiculous because there are several things there are a lot of stuff in just like the snyder uh the snyder uh, cut that i think um utterly needed to be in that movie to uh understand characters and you know make you uh like the characters and you know even simple stuff like um wonder woman just going up to that little girl like after she takes down the robbers and just you know having that little exchange with her like simple stuff like that which would have literally added like a minute to the runtime of the movie. I, I I just do not understand why Joss Whedon would even think about cutting something like that. And um, yeah, like uh, back to the one we were discussed, the unfocused part and going back to another movie that has Batman in it that was directed by Zack Snyder. I mean, without, you know, the, the Snyder cut of Justice League, I do think, think and I do understand the people that say like, you know, watching Batman v Superman for the first time is kind of unfocused because, you know, you're watching it and now it's all of a sudden, you know, going into this dream sequence with the nightmare Batman. And yeah, it's, it's going the it's laying the groundwork for the future and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's kind of like jumping around with the story that they're trying to tell and being a little unfocused there. So, so even though I love Batman v Superman, that's, that's a thing I think works with it. However, even though I say that, that that's unfocused, I can't see that level of, you know, jumping around in perspectives and, you know, what the story is about applying to something like the Batman, because I don't know what else, what other, like, you know, grand scope stories that they could be telling that will be, infin- uh, uh, you know, um, conflicting with the main narrative. Like this one just comes off to me like it will probably be fairly focused, but, you know, we'll, we'll only know when we actually see it. Apparently, like what I'm hearing, this one is a very Batman centric film, very Batman driven, not Bruce Wayne driven, Batman driven. That's what I mean. I don't mean like the one character. I mean they're they're very separate. And and that prequel novel that I read that doesn't really do much is the same. But I've heard that the opening of it is a little bit slow. I don't know how much of the opening because again, I'm not trying to get into the spoilery stuff. So I try to ignore. Like once it starts to get somewhere, I've been stopping it. But apparently, the opening is a little bit slow. But the last 45 minutes, it's uh, what I've heard from a few people that I uh, respect uh, and th- that I know a little bit is that the last 45 minutes is some of the best stuff they've ever seen on in, in the theater. Like they were like mm-hmm. edge of their seat, like excited for it. They didn't tell me what it was because again, I don't like the spoilers yeah. and they don't want to spoil it for me. And that's, you know, thank goodness they respect that. But yeah, it, it so at the beginning might be where people are a little bit like, eh. but then again, it might reel you back, re- might even reel you in. Right. So maybe some people aren't enjoying it. And then the ending is so good that it reels them in. And when you leave, cause it's the last impression, right? It's like how you meet someone and then the last impression. And that's what you kind of walk away with. I'm really curious um, how that is. I just watched Batman uh, v Superman, the extended version last night. And I love that movie. I, I actually really, really enjoy it. Uh, we got to do a ranking Batman yeah. movies on here or, we should not even rank. We should just talk about all Batman movies because I love them all. Like I said, but I'm really excited for for this one. Do you think there's a? I I, I gotta say though, when I I'm gonna refresh Rotten Tomatoes one more time while we're doing this, because mm-hmm. uh, it was at ninety percent. And let's see when I hit the refresh button, eighty nine percent now. It's dropping fast, Rob. It's dropping. <laughs> I will say this though. Like I said, I don't give a rat's butt about these scores i don't care about rotten tomato scores at all mm-hmm. but we're using this as the talking point to talk about expectations going into seeing this movie and i kind of like that that i'm i'm I, I like that it's not all 100 percent across the board right i like that some people are a little bit torn on it some people might not like it look not everybody likes everything that's something else we have to remember right it's like you know if somebody hates batman they're gonna walk into this movie and they're gonna leave most likely hating batman no matter what you do Right. There's just there's just that, um, but eighty nine percent now. I, but I I look at it and the one thing that it is is now you go in and maybe expectations now because it's not ninety five percent, it's not ninety nine percent. Now expectations maybe are reeled in a little bit, are held a little bit shorter, lighter, they're tempered a little bit, and you walk in now and you can actually people who actually you know read the reviews for the reviews they can walk in now and maybe enjoy the movie a little bit more because they're seeing like oh it's not a perfect film then you walk in and when you're expecting something to not be perfect and it ends up being better than your expectations you like it more and when you walk in and something's supposed to be perfect and it's not you like it even like it's that's how things work so maybe this is a good thing for this movie and the audience reaction 
Yeah, I think even even if you you're the opposite and you know um, you were expecting it to be bad, and then you see these these reviews and they're they're doing it one way. I think either way, you should just not be holding the you know even though these are nice and you know these are perfect the great things for them to put on like you know the blu-ray cover or whatever uh whatever cover or poster that they want to put on at the same t- at the at, at the end of the day don't hold these uh people's opinions to you know on, on a holy grail because at the, at the end of the day opinions is exactly what they are they may be critics but there's still people with just opinions so you should go go be going into this movie and you know um making up your mind for, for yourself, right? Whether you're going in and expecting it to be the Holy Grail and it tends, winds up being a little bit less than that, or you're going in uh, not expecting it to be um, a, a great movie and it turns out being a great movie, right? Either way, you should be, you know, ready to watch this movie and make up your own mind for yourself, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the best thing. And on this channel, on Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have a non-spoiler uh talk review of it and then the next day at 3 p.m friday at 3 p.m to 5 p.m we're going to be doing a live spoiler filled talk right here on the channel we're going to talk about it we won't review it we're just going to talk about it so join us in the chat for that because it's going to be a a lot of fun uh again though you know you look at it mostly though 89 percent is still overwhelmingly positive that is still crazy positive it is hold on i gotta check now how many reviews that was. I think that was 142. So of 142 people, 90%, 89% of 142 people like it. That's pretty good odds. Like you have a good odd that you're going to like it. But again, as long as one person doesn't like something, there's a chance that you won't like it too. Because if you don't like Batman, you don't like detective stories, and maybe three hours is too long for you. As much as three hours might not be too long, it might be too long. Sometimes you watch a movie and you're like, oh my God, this is still going. That happens sometimes. And maybe, And the thing is, that might happen for one person, but that might not happen for you. You might be, well, that three hours flew by, but somebody else will say it won't. And it's all subjective, and that's what's fun about it. But these mm-hmm. reviews, Rob, are, yeah, um, let me read. As grim as the burden Nolan and Snyder films were, Reeves and his team have fashioned their own distinctive and stylish variety of grimness, and they commit to it for three whole hours. Frankly, it's amazing that they got away with it. That is a three out of five score from Nicholas Barber from BBC.com. Mm-hmm. And that's another an indicator about the uh, rating as well. I think that it's just yeah. like, he's kind of hinting at that, you know, this movie's a PG 13 movie, but you know, it, 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 it pushes the edges from the sounds of things. So it's very cool. And here's one that's four out of five. Check this out. This is comicbook.com. As a reboot, the Batman is very good reintroduction of the Batman movie franchise, but one that feels like a victim of circumstance. That's four out of five. That if you read that, that doesn't sound too, you know. Positive, yeah. Yeah, I'm kidding. That's my one thing though, Rob, is how far are they gonna go into the Batman origins? I you know, like that it's again, we don't need to see it all. I'm curious to see how they progress this this character, and I'm glad that they're taking this as as a year two approach to it and not like right out of the hop. Cause again, I watched Batman V Superman yesterday and the opening credits, when you see Batman's parents, you're like, Oh man, again, but, but in fairness to that movie, they're doing it for Martha. Obviously that's the reason why they do it. Everybody, everybody's least favorite line that I think is that is the name. Why'd you say it? But it's the last name he heard his father say ever. So it kind of, you know, you got to tie it back at the. But again, that movie is like nine hours long and you forget that that's what he, what he says by the time it happens later on in the movie. Uh, there's a lot more to it. This I don't think this movie's gonna have a thing like that. I have to ask you one more question, Rob. Are you a fan of the Arkham games? I am a huge fan of the Arkham games. Like How? I haven't played, I have not played all of them because now they have so many different Telltale games and that type of stuff. I do not delve, delve that far. I've only gone to the main three of the trilogy and then Arkham Origins so far. So th- yeah. those are the only ones I've. I don't have Origins, but I have the other three. I got a three pack last. I love these. I am so bad at them, but I absolutely love these games. The Telltale games, they were a free PS Plus game one month. So I got that and I got them all. And that one's actually, it's very different. It's it's not really a video game. It's a little, a lot of different, but it's a lot of fun also. But I got to ask you, 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 you play those games. You love those games. You see the trailers for this. How similar to the Arkham games do you think that this movie could be? Well, I mean... I think there's a lot of similarities, especially with the way that, you know, like the fight scenes and stuff like that. And also just straight down to the way uh, Robert Pattinson looks in that costume. Like if you just compare like his gauntlets to like, you know, the layout of the suit, it looks very Arkham-like. 
Like there's a lot of similarities, I think there. And um, yeah. And it was just the way that he moves. I think there, there, those games are so good for a reason. And there's plenty of things that I think uh, plenty, plenty of uh, aspects of it that uh, should be repeated in, uh, in live action projects in general. So it's very cool that they're uh, uh, possibly taking some, uh, um, some inspiration from that like recently pattinson said some of his uh um stories that he was looking at and you know um that that he, that he was taking inspiration from from batman and you know they they weren't the common like common uh ones that nope. you always hear it wasn't like him saying oh i took inspiration from the long halloween or the dark knight returns or batman year one right it's he took he took some inspiration from some of the more obscure stuff, which was very cool. Because that kind of means that you know maybe he didn't read the whole thing, but he read pretty a pretty good amount of it at least, or or, or all of it. But still, it's uh, it's very interesting the inspiration that they're taking from this. And like I said, um, I think that uh, they took some inspiration from uh, Arkham Games as well for this. I watched a interview with paul dano who said that he had so much downtime because of COVID, he would actually go to his room his hotel room and just read like riddler comics and batman comics and get to know the character more so i think they had a lot of time and they got to know these characters more than any other actor probably playing superheroes ever have because of the amount of downtime they had due to right. due to COVID. i think look one thing that i think is really cool is that his emblem's a, a utility knife i think that's cool and that's what they need to add to the arkham series is a uni- utility knife emblem because at first you know i always miss the yellow but now i kind of get it you know the utility knife is it's kind of sweet that they uh that mm. they thought about that i'm really curious to see what they have in store for us when it comes to the batman robin if this goes down to 60 68 are you still going to be excited to see it well, I can't say going down to sixty-eight percent, but yes, I will still be excited. I'll just maybe have some tempered expectations slightly, maybe. But uh, no, at the same time, I'll still be extremely. It'll still be my number one uh, most anticipated movie of the year. I think. Have you had a chance to listen to the soundtrack at all by Michael Giacchino? I've not. I do not want to. I do not want to hear that stuff. I will uh, completely delve into the soundtrack uh, afterwards. Like uh, that's. Uh, Giacchino is so good. And that's one thing I did even with Spider-Man. Like I went straight on the Spotify, uh, playlist for the, uh, album of, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home and just played that like, you know, nonstop after I saw the movie. And I did not want to hear the, you know, the leaked tracks of, you know, the Garfield theme or the, uh, um, Toby theme, um, beforehand. I was just, I was ready to see it happen in the movie and, you know, take it all in at that point. So no, I've not uh, listened to any of the tracks here. Um, but you know, they've been evident in uh, the trailers and, you know, so forth. So I think this uh, scores would be awesome. I can't wait to delve into it after I see the movie. Fantastic soundtrack. Uh, mm-hmm. one that I really, really enjoy. I, it, it would, I don't think it's as strong as some other superhero soundtracks, it's very different it is unique uh but it's also reminiscent of a lot of old batman stuff as well um there was there was some time just listening to it on my you know walking around i don't listen to i don't see the i looked at the track names that one time um but but you know and then they kind of have spoilers but not really because i think they learned their lessons from the phantom menace but i you know i hope so yeah just walking around the house listening to it and uh, and sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds like something from from the past. And mm. it, it sounds it sounds nice. I'm very excited. And look, these reviews. We're going to talk more about the reviews and what it means going forward on the channel. Uh, like I said, though, Thursday and Friday we're going to be having we're going to be having spoiler talks forever on this movie because I think I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. It's very exciting. Uh, you are going to see it on Wednesday, and you're going to have a reaction out of the theater Wednesday night for the channel bam bam right up there um are you gonna go spoilers on that no no spoilers no spoilers okay i'm excited to see that then yeah. <laughs> i wasn't going to the first time but now i am i hope you enjoy it. you know 90 percent, 89 percent, whatever it is uh be yeah, damned no, uh, no spoilers i'm gonna aim uh, I'll, I'll be around a minute probably out of, out of the theater yeah I'll, no that's perfect yeah that's perfect can't wait um but that will do it for this manic monday right